Good morning, guys. Thank you for inviting me to join you. The southern end of the Cascadia Fault Zone probably will be the location of the next major earthquake, a magnitude 9 earthquake. Only about 1% of us are prepared for any type of disaster. The government loves that. They want to decrease the world's population, put out less Social Security, pay out less unemployment, food stamps, and other things that the government help poor people with. They, they, they would assume just get rid of you guys instead of um, letting you know that you are at threat of a disaster and decrease the world's population. The southern end of the Cascadia Fault Zone will more than likely be the location of the next major earthquake. Early this morning along the Gorda Ridge, uh, there was two magnitude 5.9 earthquakes. It occurred at 12.52 a.m. and 11 people reportedly felt that earthquake. The second 5.9 earthquake occurred at 1.17 a.m. local time um, off the coast of Gold Beach, Oregon. Five people reported feeling that earthquake. There's been over 40 major earthquakes in the last 10,000 years along the Cascadia Fault Zone. The majority of the recent large earthquakes have been in the Gorda Plate. Recent core samples have shown that there's been over 22 of those earthquakes that they've been able to show have had tsunamis. 1980, there was a 7.2 right here in this location. A 1954, a 6.6. .6. 2010, 11 years ago, there was a 6.5. That caused a lot of damage all the way up to uh, Ferndale, um, Eureka. In 1923, uh, let's see, there was a magnitude 7.2, and that one created a very small tsunami that was reported off the coast. They have an area, uh, let me find it up over here, which is locked where they know that stress has been building. That's up over here by Cape Blanco. The Blanco Fracture Zone has been having a lot of earthquakes lately. Another sign that stress has built up for a major earthquake. According to the Oregon.gov website, on the Cascadia Fault Zone, there has been 41 earthquakes in the last 10,000 years. Um, they have occurred as uh, a short of a period of 190 years and as far apart as 1,200 years. It's been about 320, 21 years since the last major earthquake along the Cascadia Fault Zone. So they really can't say that a major earthquake occurs every 500 years because they have occurred as short as 190 years. Here's an image of one of the core samples they took um, showing evidence of at least 22 tsunamis. This core sample was taken from N Nescaca um, Bay, Oregon. And using Google Earth, we'll zoom into that location. All right, right down here, right there. That's where that core sample was taken from. This image came from Uptown Sloth. And you can see the sand that was deposited there, there, and there uh, during the tsunami. And we'll go to that location using Google Earth. All right, right there. Shows you how far they are from the coast. And we got Cloverdale over here. Let me go back in. Pacific City. There's an interesting paper about disaster recovery and how the media has a major influence on how fast people are given financial aid or, or information, how quick they can recover. This is about the 1992, what they called the Ferndale earthquake. It was a magnitude 7.1. There was a 6.6 .6 aftershock and a 6.7. It struck rural 
Humboldt County, um, off the coast of Northwest California. Their epicenters were actually off of Petrolia. And it talks about Ferndale, Fortuna, Petrolia, uh, Rio Dell, Scotia, and Lucky, the damage. It was a reverse oblique earthquake. And there's the location of that earthquake. You can see we got uh, the Mendocino Triple Junction. And up above, we got the Gorda Plate. The media called it the Ferndale earthquake, and I want to go to that location. See how far it is from Ferndale? Damage was equal, pretty much, in Rio Dell and Ferndale. But Ferndale seemed to have been prioritized. Um, they recovered much quickly. While local residents of Humboldt County usually refer to this quake as a Humboldt County quake or the North Coast quake, the earthquake wound up with a different name in media, especially those outside the local area, in television care coverage in the San Francisco Chronicle. It was referred to as a Ferndale quake, despite the fact that Ferndale was not the community nearest the epicenter. Ferndale is a quaint Victorian village atmosphere, and touristic retailing is clearly more upscale than Rio Dale with its tiny, often poorly maintained homes and downtown retailing. Interviews suggested that people in Ferndale benefited from the media focus on the town and reporting the quake, and from their greater sophistication in dealing with government and insurance bureaucracies to ensure access to assistance. People in Ferndale who were there for the quake reported a higher percentage of recovery to their original state uh, before the quake that did such residents in Rio Dell. Rather disturbing is the association between the media attention itself, skewed by ethnicity um, and race and by income at a rate of recovery among the eight covered among the eight overcovered communities, 835 buildings were red tagged or yellow tagged as of April 1994. By August, there were only 485 buildings still in damaged condition, creating a crude recovery rate of minus 41.9% among the nine uncovered communities. However, 3,066 buildings were red or yellow tagged in April and 2030 in August, yielding a much lower recovery rate, uh, minus 33.8%. The overcover communities were thus recovering much more quickly than average, while the undercover communities were recovering somewhat slowly than average. An interesting point made by several respondents that the government Assistance in the form of low interest loans did not really represent recovery from the disaster since they added large indebtedness to the households that received such help. In fact, a number, a number commented that they did not seek such assistance because they did not want to incur uncomfortable levels of debt, though they were not asked any questions about the relative recovery of the com two communities. Several respondents in both towns volunteered comments on Ferndale's nearly complete recovery and Rio Dell's still devastating appearance. Several of these explained that Ferndale was richer and cuter than Rio Dell, which helped the former recover faster. Yeah, just another sign how they want to decrease certain populations get rid of the poor we have all seen how the government uses the media to influence people to get whatever their current agenda may be another paper from the Humboldt government says how that um, large earthquakes occur every 200 to 800 years and it's been over 300 years since the last major nine point earthquake this might be from 2016 it says the humboldt county 
civil grand jury found the overall conditions of the sheriff's office of emergency service in need of upgrades to better plan for emergencies to come. It says here the HCCGJ was pleased to find that personnel involved in planning for emergencies are well trained and highly qualified. The OES facility that presently exists are outdated and not sufficient to meet the na needs of training for a future disaster. The most recent training in Humboldt County had taken place in Fortuna because it had available location large enough to accommodate the staff requirements. Now, I don't know if they have moved the Office of Emergency Services, but it was located in the county courthouse sheriff facility built in the 1950s and was designed as a Cold War mindset, uh, not, is not American with, di not up to date with American Disabilities Acts. Um, it's a small bomb shelter that has a capacity for significantly fewer people than needed. It was never intended for use as an emergency center, and that's what it was being used for. Because the building was built in the 1950s, such things as Wi-Fi access and cell phone access were not imagined back then. It was also not equipped with satellite phone equipment that would be invaluable if communication lines are lost. The generator backup system at the courthouse building is not sufficient to power all the areas that might need might be needed in an emergency. Although the current basement location is said to be out of the tsunami hazard zone, its subterrain location is so near to the harbor seems suspect. So using Google Earth and using Google to find the location, no, they have not changed the location of this uh, emergency facility. It looks like it's still in the older building. They do have a newer building added on. But according to the Google search, it's still in the older building. They are suggesting nowadays you have at least two weeks of food and water, medical supplies. Yeah, look how close that is to the harbor. And we know tsunamis can come up over and through channels. Yeah, and they think it's safe, but that's highly suspect. Yeah, you think someone's going to come to your rescue? Yeah, and this is the location of a magnitude 6.6. .6. What kind of masonry was that building built with? Has there been any um, upgrades with a retrofitting? Are you the 1% that is prepared for a disaster? Or are you the 90% that is going to be on your own thinking that mommy government is going to come and save your butt? Yeah, this is not far from the 1980 7.2 earthquake. Yeah, not much would be standing after a magnitude 9. So did you feel any of these earthquakes? I want to cover those earthquakes real quick. Um, they showed spreading. This is an area of spreading. I've covered this. We got volcanism in this area. Um, not far from here. I found two I thought was real interesting. There was a methane ice crystal, what they call ice fire. So, what are your thoughts? Please put your comments down below. Thank you for allowing me to um, join you and talk to you about um, what the potential, what the threat is. Please stay safe. Always be prepared. If you're not prepared, please get prepared. Stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you.